Hoi An in central Vietnam is situated just half an hour drive south of the biggest city, Da Nang. Formerly known in the Western world as Phai Phu or Phai Pho, with a population of approximately 120,000 in Vietnam's Quang Nam province, it has been registered as a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1999. Along with the Kulao Cham Archipelago, it's part of the Kulao Cham Hoi An Biosphere Reserve, designated in 2009. The city has had many names throughout history. The Cham people, they call it Lam An Pho, when it was renamed Hai Pho, which means place by the sea. The French merchants call them Phai Pho, but this is due to a misunderstanding of the exact pronunciation. Port City has been called Hoi An since 1630, which translates to something like quiet community or peaceful meeting place. That's exactly what Hoi An is all about. Somehow the city seems calming and peaceful, friendly and sweet-hearted. In the old town, you feel like you've been transported back in time. The tumult and noise of modern times have not yet arrived here. You can literally st stroll through the alleys without getting stressed. Old Town Hanoi, the city's historic district, is recognized as a well-preserved example of a Southeast Asian trading port dating from the 15th to the 19th century. Its buildings and street plan reflects a blend of indigenous and foreign influences. The river system was used for the transport of goods between the highlands as well as the inland countries of Laos and Thailand and its lowlands. The individual sites of Hoi An can easily be explored on a walk. The old town is partially car free. Here you can take a relaxed walk everywhere in the old buildings. There are also restaurants and small shops which fit almost in conspicuously into the historic cityscape. Hoi An's old town was the only one to remain unscathed through the Vietnam War. Since 1999, this pittoresque ensemble of historically valuable buildings has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Since 1570, Hoi An flourished as a trading port and became the most important trade port on the South China Sea. In the 18th century, Hoi An was considered by Chinese and Japanese merchants to be the best destination for trading in all of Southeast Asia. The city also rose to prominence as a powerful and exclusive trained conduit 
between Europe, China, India and Japan, especially for the ceramic industry. Shipwreck discoveries have shown that Vietnamese and other Asian ceramics were transported from Hoi An to as far as Sassina in Egypt. Hoi An's importance waned sharply at the end of the 18th century because of the collapse of Nguyen rule, followed by rebellions and destruction. Hoi'an is also known as the city of tailors. If you have good enough time, you can have a dress or suit made to measure within two days at a decent price. Even shoes are available here, adapted to your personal measurements. We saw so many women wearing Ao Dai, a traditional Vietnamese or Chinese suit in Hoi An. And look at all these colorful I'll die here for sale. Today the town is a tourist attraction because of its history, traditional architecture and crafts such as textiles and ceramics. Many bars, hotels and resorts have been constructed, both in Hoi An and the surrounding area. I have never seen a wooden bicycle, I guess I must have taken some time to make this one. Sino-Portuguese architecture style is an Asian hybrid style incorporating elements of both Chinese and Portuguese architectural styles. Many buildings in Hoi An's old quarter reveal this architecture style. Prominent in the city's old town is its covered Japanese bridge. It dates from the late 16th century by Japanese merchantmen. By suggestive renovations and repairs on the bridge have occurred throughout the period to the modern day. 
when we were in Hoi An, the bridge was being totally renovated and all covered up. When Da Nang became the new center of trade and later French influence in central Vietnam, Hoi An became a forgotten backwater. Local historians also say that Hoi An lost its status as a desirable trade port due to the silting up of the river mouth. The result was that Hoi An remained almost untouched by the changes to Vietnam over the next 200 years. The city was finally revived, brought back to the world in the 1990s by a Polish architect, conservator and influential cultural educator. You can find a statue of him in the city. We stumbled across Hua Phan Lek Tia, a pretty little Chinese temple which is free to enter and view. The entrance has these two large Chinese vases, one on each side. The courtyard is rather spacious. Some of the temples were pretty busy with crowds of tourists, so we avoided them. Instead, we found this place to be quite nice and a peaceful place to relax away from the stream of tourists. Everywhere in the city you will come across small shops selling lanterns, an iconic symbol of the ancient town of Hoi An. The Cantonese Assembly Hall, Hoi Quang Quang Tong, is known as a place where Vietnamese and Chinese cultures blend, and an important historic relic of Hoi An ancient town. As soon as you enter the gate, you can admire three large paintings of three famous mandarins of the Three Kingdoms period, Liu Bei, Trong Phi and Quang Kong. They attracted three stone entrance gates and four pillars has a roof decorated with dragons and what appears to be lions. The main attraction is the center garden, which is nicely laid out and peaceful. Here in the courtyard, you will find a standing dragon fountain made out of pottery. The colorful dragon and fish statues spurt water at each other in the garden fountain of the assembly hall. The large coiled dragon is said to represent power, 
while the fish represent scholarly knowledge. Other animals in the assembly hall garden also symbolized qualities admired and desired by this Chinese community. With Chinese-style architecture and a combination of wood and stone, the decorative details are delicately and elaborately carved, giving it an unmistakable character. The Cantonese Assembly Hall was built in 1885 by a Chinese merchant, initially to worship Confucius and Tianhao Tan Mao. After 1911, it was transferred to worship Tianyan and Guang Gong. In 2019, Hoi An was listed as one of Vietnam's key culture-based tourist areas where rampant tourism growth threatens the sustainability. Owing to the increased number of tourists visiting Hoi An, a variety of activities are emerging that allow guests to get out of the old quarter and explore by motorbike, bicycle, kayak or motorboat. Strolling along the riverbanks of Hoi An, it is impossible not to notice all the plastic rubbish that is polluting the river. This, sadly enough, seems to be a common problem all over Southeast Asia. So much rubbish. What a shame.
The Hoi An Folklore Museum at 33 Nguyen Tai Hock Street was opened in 2005 and is the largest two-story wooden building in the old town. At 57 meter long and 9 meter wide, with fronts at Nguyen Tai Hock Street and Bangdang Street. On the second floor, there are 490 artifacts organized into four areas plastic folk arts, performing folk arts, traditional occupation and artifacts related to the daily life of Hoi An residents. The Folklore Museum includes also an exhibition on the traditional clothing of the Vietnamese rural population. It's rare to get such a realistic insight into the everyday life of the local population.